Hello YouTube. Um, I'm actually going to be starting a, a microeconomics playlist. Um, I'll try to get in a, a few videos um, to kind of help out at least start the basic concepts of microecon. Um, so today we're going to go over supply and demand, PPFs, and advantages. Um, kind of just like the intro and directory stuff for uh, microeconomics. I just pulled up a practice quiz I found online. Um, we're just going to go over it. So here we go. Um, multiple choice practice problems. So, opportunity cost. So, opportunity cost um, pretty much is the value of your next best alternative. Um, pretty much, I guess an example would be um, if you had two colleges and you had you wanted to get into your number one school but you didn't get in, your opportunity cost would be your next um, college down the line. Um, that would be an example. So then that begs the question, what is the answer for this section here? Um, well, it's the highest valued. Um, yeah, that kind of gave it away. It's, it's, it's C. Um, based off that explanation, you should then be able to figure that one out. Okay, so the table to the right lists six points of production possibility frontiers for cheese and DVDs. Um, given the information, which of the following combinations is attainable? Okay. So pretty much what this is saying is um, if you produce zero amount of cheese, the maximum amount of DVDs you could produce is 60. Um, and the, if you put all your efforts and resources into making cheese, the maximum amount you could produce is 10. That means you would make no DVDs. Um, and then these are how you, these values would show how that, um, how your resources are divided. Um, so you can produce cheese and DVDs. I don't know why cheese and DVDs, but that's what it is. So let's look at the... Let's see. The first value here, 2 tons of cheese, uh, 56, pretty much given the data. So that's the maximum amount of uh, DVDs you could produce or cheese you could produce. So that is attainable. Um, 8 tons of cheese and 21,000. Oh, the maximum you could produce is 20. So you can't go over because you are physically impossible to do so, so the answer is B. Um, this one, just to further explain if you didn't get that, C um, would be 6 tons of cheese and 34, so the maximum you could produce is 36, so you're actually producing 2,000 less DVDs, so you'd be under using, undervaluing your resources. Um, and then D here, 7 tons of cheese, 20,000. Well, eight you could produce twenty thousand again. It's uh, this one's unattainable. It goes over, so that's the key here. Okay, third one. The table above lists six points on the production possibilities frontier. That's the PPF for cheese and DVDs. From this information, we can conclude that the production is inefficient if this economy produces. Well, like we discussed before, this one was inefficient because um, you aren't maximizing your resources. So I believe the answer would be D. Um, again, this one is the maximum amount, so that's good. Um, this one would be going over, etc. Okay, so next one. So Barry takes 15 minutes to burn a CD and 5 minutes to make a sandwich. Clint takes 20 minutes to burn a CD and 4 minutes to make a sandwich. So Barry has an absolute advantage in what? Well, first thing I would kind of do is look at what are the, what are the uh, comparisons. So CDs and sandwiches. Um, so who can make the CDs the fastest? It could be your first question. Whoever makes it the fastest has um, an absolute advantage in this case because, yeah, they each have an absolute advantage over each other, but you just don't know, but you just got to figure out which one, which in which subject. So if Barry takes 15 minutes to, make a, to burn a CD and Clint takes 20, Barry makes it faster, so he has an absolute advantage in CDs. Um, so that means Clint would have it in sandwiches. Um, now you look at the answer choices. Oh, look, it's the first one, A. Okay, Lizzie takes 20 seconds to stuff an envelope and 10 seconds to seal it. Arnold takes 15 seconds to stuff an envelope and 5 seconds to seal it. Lizzie, Lizzie has a comparative advantage in what? Well, let's take a look at this here. Um, the ratio would be 20 seconds to 10 seconds versus 15 seconds and 5 seconds. So this is Lizzie, this is Arnold. Um, so whoever has the smallest ratio 
has the comparative advantage. Um, so, let's see. That means Lizzie would have a comparative advantage in stuffing envelopes, right? And Arnold would have a comparative advantage in sealing them. Okay, so according to the principle of comparative advantage, if the United States trades with Mexico, uh, it's most likely what? Well, both countries want to benefit, pretty much. Why would... Yeah, that's the only answer that makes sense. Um, the U.S. will benefit, Mexico will lose. Well, that doesn't make sense for Mexico. The U.S. will lose, and Mexico will benefit. That doesn't make sense for the U.S. Neither will benefit. Well, why would they, you know, make any agreement? So the answer has to be D. Okay, let's um, move on to a more complicated problem. Um, so let's take a look at this car or chart here. Um, there's cars and airplanes, and the U.S. produces 400 cars and 200 airplanes. Uh, Japan can produce 600 cars and 100 airplanes. So, which country has the comparative advantage? Well, let's look at the ratios here. So we got the U.S. and Japan, and the U.S. can produce 400 cars for every 200 airplanes. Air, I'm just going to say. And Japan can produce 600 cars for every one airplane. So if you want to make the ratio simple, it would be this would be a 2 to 1. The U.S. would have 2 to 1, and Japan would have 6 to 1. So which country has the comparative advantage? Well, Japan, it seems, can produce more cars, so therefore it has a comparative advantage in cars. Okay? So which country has an absolute advantage um, for airplanes? Well, that would be U.S., the U.S. can produce 200 airplanes, while Japan can only produce one. So that would be the United States. Okay. So, um, the PPF, or Production Possibility Frontier, is pretty much when the two countries will, in this case, will work together um, their combined outputs to see um, who can, if they can pr maximize their uh, possibility frontier, production possibility frontier. So... If both the U.S. and Japan allocated all of their resources to cars, what would the total be? So if the U.S. can produce 400 and Japan can produce 600, the total would be 1,000 cars if they produced zero airplanes. So we put that on the axis. Now the next question we want to ask is, who can produce the airplanes the best and who can produce the cars best? Well, A and B kind of answered that question. So the U.S. can produce airplanes best and Japan produces cars the best. And what's the maximum amount that they can produce of each? Well, the U.S. can produce 600... Um, oh, wait, cars, sorry. Uh, let me fix that. Oops. So, uh, the U.S. can produce 200 airplanes as their maximum, and that means Japan's maximum can produce is 600 cars. So that's the maximum of each. So now the question is, how do we divide up the work? Well, first, let's uh, plot where these two intersection points would be, or where the data point would be for, the, for this point. Um, now, if you were to connect the, I guess, make your PPF, um, you would have the maximum would be 1,000. Whoops. Going on. There we go. Okay. Maximum would be a thousand. Then you would go to this point, and then afterwards the maximum you could produce is three hundred. So this would be your PPF, and you could calculate the slope um, of this line here, um, and that would be a negative two slope, I believe, and this one would be negative six. Um, but what do what does the slope represent? Well, the slope represents the opportunity cost. Um, and this would be the combined PPF. So now they have a greater um, PPF, which means they can produce more um, of the goods if they decide to trade. Okay, this video is going a little longer than I expected, so I'm going to stop here and do some more later. So I'll make a part two video or a continuation of this video. Um, if you want some more practice problems, feel free to check out the next video and hope this helped um, applying some economic uh, terms here. This was just a brief intro. I guess we'll definitely get in some more later, so stay tuned.